To up your style game, check out HypeLitStore.com to find some of the latest trendy designs with the Space Galaxy hoodie, Oreo joggers, or vintage Rick t-shirt, among many others. Once again, at HypeLitStore.com. Seven worst moments in Shark Tank history. If you would like to be entered into our monthly shout-out contest, please leave a comment down below with your thoughts on this video, and also leave a like on this video as well. This next guy comes in with the real estate business. Although his business model is quite different from the usual real estate transaction, it's quite entertaining how fast Mark Cuban lays down a no to what he is hearing. But we'll get to that in a moment. First, here is the business owner opening his pitch. For literally hundreds of years, the most proven way to consistently build wealth has been through investing in real estate. Unfortunately, traditional real estate investing is difficult, intimidating, and expensive. The best deals are only offered to the super wealthy behind closed doors. His whole platform is that real estate is too confusing and for most people, they won't be able to buy at a good price because the rich people are the only ones who get the best deals in private. Everyone else is left paying at inflated prices, according to this guy. Regardless if you agree with that or not, that is what this guy's whole business philosophy is based around. Here is that Mark Cuban response I was referencing. This is about 40 seconds into the pitch when Mark gives his quick thoughts. Now, you have the opportunity to get in on the ground floor of an exciting new business that will change real estate investing forever. Tycoon Real Estate is a crowd investing platform that allows everyday people to invest in real estate for as little as $1,000. I hate it. I'm out. Doing some research about this business, the way it works is that people crowdfund real estate purchases. You alongside other people buy homes and then you can try to sell them at a markup and you receive whatever percentage of the sale you initially bought the home for. It wasn't just Mark that said no, everyone else did as well, with it being called quote horrible and also risky and uncomfortable among other things. In reality, it seems like quite the Ponzi scheme, not a great way to make money. Following this episode, the business really tanked. This resulted in the, in the business being bought for a very cheap price. It appears that it is no longer operational as of today. Revestor. None of the sharks are a fan of this guy's business, as it seems to not really be a business, and instead it just comes off as a quick talking guy trying to make some quick money. His idea is a real estate website that lists a bunch of different information on the homes. Mark does not like the sounds of it and says this in response to what the website would have to offer in terms of information on properties. Cash flow, cap rate, return on investment. That's a spreadsheet. It, that's a Buddy, spreadsheet. I can't no, we're not that on basing own. a spreadsheet online. That's not what we're doing. For some information on this service, according to their website, Site, Revestor is a patent pending real estate search engine for home buyers and investors to search the best homes for sale by the highest potential returns. For consumers and home buyers, they use Revestor to gain confidence by seeing if prospective homes can rent for the mortgage payments. Knowing if one can rent a home for the payment is important and can help reduce risk while bringing peace of mind. Revestor empowers its users with the information they need to make smart decisions. For investors, they use Revestor to instantly search homes for sale at the highest cap rate and cash flow. Then for real estate professionals, they can use Revestor to connect with home buyers and investors and assist them with their transactions. Real estate agents are spending hours sifting and sorting through listings to find potential deals for their investor clients. Revestor does all the heavy lifting so you can focus on what you do best. Sunscreen Mist Mark Cuban has no confidence in this duo. He keeps asking them about what types of potential buyers they have, as the business owners just keep vaguely saying they have hundreds of people interested on a daily basis. Mark does not believe they have any genuine interest, however. Then one of the guys says they receive these offers on message boards online. Mark then asks, what message boards? Here is the response. Well, quite frankly, um, the, the internet searches is just been organic by posting PR ah! web, press releases. I'm out. I am so Thank out. God I am he's so out. out. Founded in 2006, Sunscreen Mist has been the world leader of automated patented sunscreen, spray stations and booths. 
Sunscreen mist spray on sunscreen machines make protecting one's skin quick, easy, and convenient for all ages. Spray on sunscreen machines or profit centers and guest amenities that send a message of safety and concern to guests. Each spray on sunscreen machine allows for the customer to choose from the board spectrum UVA slash UVB, SP15, and SPF30 sunscreens, tan enhancer, cooling aloe, and insect barrier with SPF30. Dude wipes. For this situation, the two business owners are in between two, well technically three offers. 30% equity for $300,000 from either Robert Herjavec or Kevin O'Leary, separately, or they will work together at $300,000, invested equally from both, but only at 27.5% equity split between them. The business owners are unsure what to do, and there's a lot of back and forth with them thinking. When it comes time for them to make their choice, there is a moment of silence. Mark then jumps up and makes an offer to take the deal at an even lower equity percentage for 25% at $300,000. I'll do it, come on. 300K, 25%. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't quite understand what do wipes are, they are perfect for travel, TSA approved, but you, you should never really leave home without them. Use on your face, pits, and other dude regions too. They're just wipes for a man, is how they are marketed. Coffee Jewels. This situation is a rare one as well. All four of the Sharks have teamed up to offer $150,000 with a few caveats that will eventually end up with the business owners paying off the Sharks, meaning that they will once again wholly own their company, their business owners and creators to clarify. To make sales, the Shark Supergroup want to bring their product to retail stores and even showcase it on QVC. However, Mark jumps in with a much more traditional offer for a quite a bit more money and the strategy of not putting it into retail so soon. My preference is that you don't go wholesale slash retail in QVC right away, because I see this as having a great opportunity for a liquidity event. I see this as being able to sell the company. Mark ended up losing this deal. For the description of the company, they say this and also tell their story. Dave and I are dedicated to creating the perfect sip of coffee, and we've got it nailed. One thermos sip, five coffee jewels, and 12 ounces of your favorite coffee or tea if that's your thing. The sip is amazing, it keeps coffee hot for up to five hours, seals with the press of a button, and the design lets you sip your coffee from the lid in the same way you sip coffee from a ceramic mug. The problem is that the sip is so well insulated that it keeps black coffee hot enough to burn your tongue for over an hour, and won't cool to the perfect drinking temperature range for over two hours. Jewel solves this problem by rapidly absorbing all that extra heat and storing it in the phase change material inside the beans. They do this so well that your coffee is now safe to sip under three minutes, reaches the perfect drinking temperature range in half an hour, and then stays in that range for three hours or more. Your time is too valuable to wait around for your coffee to be the right temperature. Your money is too valuable to throw away coffee that gets too cold. And your taste buds are definitely too valuable to ever burn your tongue again. This one falls less on the quote scam side, I'd say. I believe he's genuinely on the show hoping to get investments for his business, but most of the sharks think that he's totally kidding and that it is all a big joke. The business being presented is candles. The guy is selling just candles. Now Johnson, you can't eat this wax. How do you live? Well, my wife works full time, so. And you don't work, just do candles? I do candles, yeah. You gotta be kidding. You got a shot here, right? Don't let these guys drag you down. The business owner goes on to explain that he is currently in college, and as a part of one of his classes, he came up with the candles. In order to get the business going, he and his wife invested $40,000. I'm going to assume a majority from his wife, as once again he is not working, just she is, which I think is fine, but the sharks seem to be a little surprised by the situation. The next question that is asked is, how are the candles made? Where do you make them? How are you manufacturing them? Um, I hand pour them. Every one of them. You what? You hand pour? I hand pour them. He's hand pouring each can himself. All of the candles are hand poured. Now, the sharks all seem to think this guy is just here to waste time instead of doing actual business. It is discussed that his product is in multiple large department stores. He does have some sales, but not a whole lot. To finish off this pitch, Robert hits hard with a question. 
Mark Cuban, though, defends the business owner and seems to be the only one thinking that the candle business and pitch is not a joke. Johnson, I gotta ask you, why? I'm sitting here thinking, has anybody ever told you this was a good idea? But don't kill him yet, Robert. Fire avert. This is just an unusual moment where Mark Cuban asks the business creator to make a phone call to his number one investor, a good friend of his who currently owns 60% of the company. All of the sharks interested want to get the majority of the control of the company back to the creator, who is the guy presenting on the show. So Mark hops on the phone to talk with the 60% equity owner of the company. Hey Jeff, how are you? Good, hey Peter, hey Mark. The question that we all had was, with Peter only having 30% left, it made it a little bit difficult for us to invest because he'd be diluted and we were concerned with the amount of equity he'd have after a deal. Fire Avert is plug-in ready. Your home will be protected from stove fires in minutes. Simply plug it into the back of your stove. There is always smoke before fire. This is why Fire Avert is activated by your smoke alarm, cutting the power to your stove and oven before there is a flame. Unattended cooking ranges are the number one cause of home fires in the US. Fire Avert helps prevent you from being another statistic. Thank you all for watching. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye.